How's it going guys? So this week, by popular demand, I've gotten a lot of questions about this current situation. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about the Gorilla Glue Girl on TikTok. Uh, I guess if you guys don't know about it, I'll just throw on the TikTok right now. Hey y'all, for those of y'all that know me know my hair has been like this for about a month now. It's not by choice. No, it's not by choice. When I do my hair, I like to, you know, finish it off with the little got to be glue spray. You know, just to keep it in place. Well, I didn't have any more got to be glue spray, so I used this. Gorilla glue spray. Bad, bad, bad idea. Y'all, look. My hair, it don't move. You hear what I'm telling you? It don't move. I've washed my hair 15 times. And it don't move. Stiff wear. Woo! My hair. So I'm going to tell y'all like this. If you ever, ever run out of got to be glue spray, don't ever, ever use this. Unless you want your hair to be like that. For you cannot make this stuff up, guys. Before I go into, uh, I guess, the facts of the situation and I guess my opinion as to whether or not I would take this possible lawsuit that this girl's trying to uh, file at this point, uh, allegedly on the news coming out now that he, she wants to file a lawsuit against a uh, Gorilla Glue. I just wanna let you guys know that this is not intended to be legal advice. I am nobody's lawyer in this situation and this video is meant for entertainment purposes only. So in a case such as this, obviously this is a, what's called a product liability case and under products liability, there are three forms of products liability. Number one is a manufacturing defect. What that pretty much means is that it the product was designed exactly how the designers intended it to be designed, but there was some type of issue in the manufacturing process that made that one product defective. The second type of defect for products liability is a design defect. So pretty much means that the design in itself is what caused uh, the injury. Third would be a marketing defect or what's otherwise called a warning defect, failure to warn. And in this case, we would have to evaluate what the actual warning label says. So in this case, uh, Ms. Brown would more than likely be trying to pursue a warning label defect or a marketing label defect. All right, so at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and post here in the corner uh, the warning label for Gorilla Glue products and we'll go over it together. Uh, I wanna just really just point out, honestly, the last sentence in the first paragraph, which explicitly states, our spray adhesive states in the warning label, do not swallow, do not get in eyes, on skin or on clothing. Guys, this kind of really reminds me of law school if, uh, you're more than likely going to have this. If you are in law school right now, you're more than likely going to have this in your final exam if your torch professor is witty like how ours was. Uh, but in this situation, more than likely, Ms. Brown is obviously going to be going after a uh, failure to warn as far as, you know, product liability goes. And in this case, you know, the argument from defense side is more than likely going to be that, you know, the scalp, in this case, that she sprayed it on her scalp, is part of the skin. And it would be unreasonable to, you know, unreasonably burdensome, burdensome to put every single, you know, warning as far as where not to spray this on your, you know, skin or body parts, just because if that were the case, the warning label would look like a CVS, uh, CVS receipt. In this situation, you know, with every personal injury case, you don't only evaluate the liability portion of the case that we're looking, we're doing now. We also have to evaluate the damages. And in this case, we don't really know what, you know, her damages are to this point. Obviously, you know, she's going through something right now. She's going through a lot of emotional distress. It's been a month since she's had this on her hair. and She cannot take it off. But we don't know if she's going to have some type of permanent damage as a result of spraying this Gorilla Group spray on her head. And at this point, you don't know, I mean, we don't know if she's gonna have to, she's gonna have any issues, you know, if the hair might have problems regrowing or if she just needs to shave off the hair. And I know that's, you know, that's a terrible situation, especially for, you know, women. But at this point, we don't have uh, an exact evaluation of what her damages are moving forward. So in this case, if I were to have a 
situation like this, you know, client walk into my office with a similar situation like this, we would obviously evaluate everything from liability standpoint to a damages standpoint. And at this point, you know, I'd obviously, you know, I'd let her know that, look, we're filing these lawsuits. It costs a lot of money, uh, a lot of manpower. And at this point, you know, we just don't have substantial damages. And obviously, uh, we don't have a very solid li liability argument at this point. Just because, you know, if you put this in front of a jury of, you know, our 12 peers, they're going to more than likely look at this as, as a situation like, yes, it is common sense. You should not be spraying this on your head. Guys, if you have any questions having to do with products liability cases or any videos you may have seen online in this situation uh, having to do with potential lawsuits, uh, let me know and I'll, you know, I'll do a video about it. Uh, shoot me a text. Give me a call. I'm here to help.